Clemson was the bigger story last night than Duke. And more specifically, Dabo Sweeney, the story. The all-time great coaches that sustain their success over decades learn to adapt. You either adapt or die at some point. That's what made Coach K an all-time great. It was his ability to adapt over generations, finding ways to relate to players for over 40 years as Duke's head coach, embracing changes like the one and done and all that came with that. He was always very forward-thinking till the very end. Nick Saban, the same way with the way his offenses have evolved over the last decade, bringing in Lane Kiffin in 2015 and the types of quarterbacks he was he recruited and the types of offenses he's run at Bama, that is adapting. Meanwhile, the coaches who don't adapt, they flame out. And it could even get ugly at the end. I'll refer you to how things ended for Woody Hayes or in basketball, how things ended for Bob Knight. As college football changes drastically around him, Dabo Sweeney has arrived at a career crossroads. Either adapt or die. Because last night revealed just how little he has evolved and Duke exposed it. Dabo, he's refused to go into the portal. That's mainly what we're hitting on here. He's the type of guy that when he offers a scholarship to someone, it means a lot to him. And it's a two-way street in terms of a relationship. He's not the type of coach that looks at that lightly. And it's commendable. We're not going to give up on you. We're not going to quit on you. We're not going to go into the portal and quickly find your replacement if things don't work out right away. And the reason why that worked so well was because Clemson seldom missed on anybody. But after a while, you're bound to miss every now and then, especially after COVID and that year where you weren't able to bring kids in on visits and Tape was sparse and games were sparse. That makes things difficult, too. You know who has used the portal very well, though? Florida State. When you watch them on Sunday, you see, oh, there's a dynamic receiver in Deion Coleman that would have been very nice to have if you're Cade Klubnick, if you're Garrett Riley, and if you're Clemson. They brought in a running back, too. Clemson does not do that. Dabo has refused to go into the portal. It kind of reminds me of Jimbo Fisher a year ago where his offense became outdated. <laughs> he became a dinosaur. And it wasn't until he got called onto the carpet and things were embarrassing and he was exposed before he decided to change and hire an offensive coordinator. And he hired Bobby Petrino. Early results look good, but we'll see how that shapes up against Miami when A&M goes on the road this weekend. Dabo needs to adapt and he needs to go into the portal because what was laid bare last night in Durham. Something I saw being in the building. It jumped out to you, whether you were there or watching on television. They don't have dudes, and they've clearly missed on guys offensively. That's why the offense isn't dynamic. Everybody scapegoated DJ Uyunglele. They scapegoated him and Brandon Streeter. But the offense still looks very much the same. So either that's Dabo dictating what he wants the offense to look like to Garrett Riley, or it's not DJU's fault. It's not Cade Klubnick's fault. It's not Garrett Riley or Brandon Streeter's fault. It's the offensive line isn't as strong as it was when they were national championship winners with Deshaun and Trevor Lawrence, and the skill position players on the outside. Sands Antonio Williams, not that good. Adam Randall isn't it. You weren't seeing a lot of separation from him or from Bo Collins. Like, Will Shipley looked the part. We know he's good, but everybody else, still very much a question mark. What the transfer portal allows for you to do is quickly correct some of those mistakes. So if you know you have a shortcoming at receiver, oh, you can just plug and play. Here's Deion Coleman. You have the tape, high school tape. You have college tape. You know exactly what this guy can be, or you have a good understanding for who this player is and how he will fit into your system. Plug and play, fix a problem, and you're off and running. That's what Clemson needs to do. And it was obvious that they lacked that offensively last night. And it's the second straight year, and you could argue the third straight year, they've been dealing with those same problems. Now, with all that said, it's not time to bury Clemson. But that hasn't stopped some from doing so. 
specifically and predictably. Paul! Dabo's dynasty is done. Uh, what else can anyone say, Greeny? It's, it's really been teetering for a couple of years, but what happened last night is simply unexplainable. This is now the third loss out of the last four games for Clemson. And, and quite frankly, I, I don't see any upside. They brought in Garrett Riley. That was supposed to be the savior. They had the quarterback that was going to be Trevor Lawrence's uh, wonder kind. And, and frankly, nothing happened. And they, they didn't lose to a Florida State or a Notre Dame or an Alabama or a Georgia. They lost to Duke, which has a very good quarterback, a nice program, nice being the operative word. They have nowhere to go. And, and Dabo's nonsense after the game isn't going to impress anyone. Uh, this this program is, is flatlining right now. Shocking take. Wonder kind? It's a good word. Look hmm. it up. Read a book for once, uh, WD. Paul! Yeah. How come it's always ACC teams and Big Ten programs that are flatlining? And I don't hear Paul making those takes <laughs> about Jimbo Fisher a year ago. And I don't see it when those SEC programs are on the downswing. I don't remember that with LSU and Ed Orgeron a few years ago. It's interesting. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Just maybe. They still ran for 200 yards and threw for 200 yards in the game. They still have a program with incredible resources poured into it. So I'm willing to say that Dabo has an opportunity to adjust and fix this problem. It does seem like a problem that's fixable. So I won't write them off. I won't do the, oh, the dynasty's dead or any of that. They still have won 10 games every year dating back to 2011. So until they don't do that, I'm not going to write off the Tigers in that regard. But I will say they have not evolved, and that's because of Dabo Sweeney, and Duke was the one to expose that last night.